on the sixth day of October, Halloween gave to me six prequel bloodstones, five diabolical fledglings, four vampire pianists, three dead professors, two Michelle actresses, and a radu drooling something bloody. <laughs> Hey there, welcome back to our 31 days of Halloween celebration. Here we are at the end of our journey of subspecies movies. And while I love doing this series, kind of glad it's done. Not gonna lie. I'm looking forward to moving on to uh, some other movies. Some other movies that might be better than the subspecies movies, especially the later ones. But we come to the whole reason I wanted to do all of these in the first place, which was uh, subspecies five, uh, blood shenanigans blood uh hoot nanny blood rise is what it's called blood rise and uh blood rise and this is another one of those subspecies for bloodstorm subspecies five blood rise it, it's doing the subtitle after the title which is not how we did the first couple of sequels but you know we grow we evolve as people that's uh that's part of the joy of life is that both human beings and subspecies films uh learn and grow and Subspecies 5, Blood Rise, is a really interesting way to bring back this series. Because it is a prequel. It doesn't bring Radu back from the dead. It, you know, look, I would have said they never could have brought him back from the dead after the third one. But sure enough, in the fourth one, uh, he just falls into some water and he's fine. Uh, they, they do not attempt to bring him back from his head, incinerating on an iron pike outside a cemetery. Uh, so we go back in time. We get the origins of Radu. And I'll be damned if there's not some strangely poignant stuff in this movie. So one of the things that's interesting is Anders Hove gets to play a non-gross vampire shit boy Radu. He gets to just kind of play himself. And so the, the way that all this shakes out, it starts off with him narrating and this is by the way another full moon pictures we got away from that in the fourth film which does not have the full moon logo anywhere on it this one definitely does and it's a little updated so it's even fancier than before but charles van still uh, still cranking these out and radu uh, is narrating his own tale and he's telling us about how when he was born, he was born to a, uh, a, a powerful sorceress, the child of uh, King v uh, Vadislaus. And we see the birth of Radu here, where this old sorceress woman squats and grunts, and pfft, out comes Radu. And he's a little monstrous baby. And the sorceress, of course, is very happy that she's had a monster baby. But she's pretty quickly assaulted by some people who are like Knights of the Templar or something like that. Uh, people on a crusade. And they take this demon baby after stabbing the uh, the old woman. They take the, the demon baby and they clip his pointed ears and they say that, uh, or Radu says, you know, they put all these potions on me and whatnot so that I didn't look like a monster. And they raised him in the church to be uh, someone who could go out and, and fight demons and monsters and things like that, which is kind of an interesting idea. We don't see a ton of that. We see a little bit of that. But in pretty short order, uh, they're sent off to destroy King Vadislaus. And when he gets there, uh, Radu uh, is told by the uh the the you know cersei the sorceress the, his mother and is like um hey by the way you were born a vampire like you you're not just a regular schmegular guy and redu is like whoa, whoa what i'm not and she's like yeah 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 your your father is king vadislaus and your mission to come here and get the bloodstone is just you know your head being filled with nonsense by all these monks and whatnot and, um, so he's, you know, blown away by all this 
Uh, but he kind of denies it initially. And tries to, you know, kill the sorceress, but uh, he, he can't. She, you know, uh, fucks off. And, uh, but he does find um, this woman named Helena. And she has been a sort of consort of Vladislav's, but she's like, no, 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 I never drink his blood. I'm not a vampire. And this woman is played by Denise Duff, uh, a.k.a. Michelle from Subspecies 2, 3, and 4. And looking shockingly young for being at least what, I mean, at least a quarter century older, right? Like, she has to be in her 40s, if not 50s at this point, and, and looks kind of amazing. And, uh, you know, but what can, they can do all kinds of stuff with special effects these days. But she's really good. And it, it's kind of fun to see her play a different character because she's sort of trapped in those subspecies movies, the earlier subspecies movies, in this role of Michelle, where her whole role is, I'm a vampire and I don't like being a vampire. Outside of the first film, the rest, every other movie is, I'm a vampire and I don't like being a vampire. Will I cross the line and become a true monster or... Will I retain my humanity? And that's it. It's a real one note uh, kind of affair after uh, the first film. And so in this one, she, when she sees Radu, like she begs for the life of her child, who we learn is Stefan. Stefan, the brother, uh, because, you know, Vladislav uh, sired both Radu and Stefan. Stefan to a human woman and uh, Radu with, uh, you know, a sorceress. And Radu says, well, I can't kill Vladislav, but what I can do is I can rescue this woman and her child. I can keep them safe. So uh, one of his mom pals is like, dude, you've totally got to kill her. He's like, no, 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 everything's cool. And if she turns, then I'll, I'll murder her with this sort of Laertes that I've got that kills vampires and whatnot. So he takes her out and uh of the castle and is going to take her to safety and she calls him you know her her savior and so forth and radu is uh you know kind of heroic in this moment also gets hold of the bloodstone during this and at a certain point helena is revealed to have be been turned into a vampire like she reacts to sunlight and Radu discovers that she's got these bite marks on her legs. I guess that's where Radu gets it, is from his dad. All this biting legs of women that we've seen uh, all through these series. And she tries to turn him into a vampire. But it turns out you can't make a vampire a vampire. And Vadislas shows up, grabs Helena and Stefan, and also takes the Sword of Laertes. And then Radu, thinking like, oh my goodness, I've been made a vampire, um, runs back into Cersei, who tells him like, no, dumbass, you've always been a vampire. I told you all of this. Like, the, you, you need to look within yourself and realize that you have always been a monster. And uh, so over the next century or so, Cersei teaches him all this, like, you know, how to summon demons and how to travel with all the shadow stuff and how to use his vampiric powers to hunt people and all of that. And then he tries to steal some shit from her and she banishes him. And so he has nobody. Radu is lost and alone. He has no one to teach him how to be a vampire anymore. And he's slightly the Radu that we know. Like, he's definitely becoming more monstrous at this point in the story, but he's lonely. He's still got that element of humanity. And it's one of the things that makes this movie interesting is that the origin of Radu isn't just, you know, I was birthed to this sorceress from a vampire king and I was a monster. It's kind of an interesting story. And it's, like I said, very fun to see Anders Hove playing outside of the makeup for a large part of this. And even when he is playing in the makeup, it's a very different kind of Radu. It isn't, you know, just I am the the all powerful vampire. He has this real pathos to him, and it, it's interesting to see. And we also see him run into Ash and uh, from Vampire Journals, the and also 
subspecies for. Ash, played by a much younger actor because, you know, it's set earlier and all. And Ash and his sister are musicians playing in, like, local pubs and whatnot in the Middle Ages or whatever. And uh, Radu loves the music. And so he ends up making a deal with them where he wants to give them immortality for in exchange for companionship. And Ash is pretty quick to do it. Ariel, not so much, but, you know, Radu, not one to stand on ceremony, makes her a vampire anyway. And she is pretty quick to go blood crazy. Like, once she becomes a vampire, she is into being a vampire. Whereas Ash is a little more... Um, a, a, a little more elegant with it. He's not just monstrous the way that his sister is. Also, don't even worry about it. We've got our, you know, requisite nudity uh, during some of the feeding scenes. So, you know, Full Moon still holding it down in that regard. And uh, Redu asked them to play and they can't really play anymore. There are a couple of moments of this and they're... I get the sense, and maybe this is just me trying to make the movie better than it is, but it's kind of an interesting idea that once you are undead, once you no longer have a soul, then you are unable to play music because it requires that, you know, empathy or artistry or something. And so when Ariel tries to blow her flute, it just sounds hideous and it affects Radu. Like it's, uh, like a, a real dog whistle. It really bothers him. And uh, so it, that's also a setup for later in the movie. We learn that, you know, hey, if you do this around a vampire, they freak out if they hear bad music or whatever. But Redu is training them, teaching them to be better vampires, teaching them how to hunt. And uh, they get uh, invaded at a certain point by Diana who is a demon slayer like uh, Radu was, and also like Radu, is descended from a sorceress. And she keeps trying to kill him, but he ends up biting her and turning her into a vampire as you know, both punishment for coming after him. And I, I think a little bit of, you know, you, you just need a, a taste of how the other half lives because you have the same demonic blood uh, in me that, uh, or in you that I have. And, uh, but the, they, they take off and, um, Ash and Ariel grab all of Diana's demon hunting weapons and they fuck off. And so once again, it is Radu just, you know, traveling the world on his own. And Radu ends up tracking them down ultimately to uh, Bucharest, where what will ultimately become the castle and the catacombs, where we have club views and all that stuff from Vampire Journals and Subspecies 4. Um, he, he finds them there, and he also finds Helena, who is a vampire queen now and is the one ruling Bucharest. And uh, they make a deal like uh, uh, Radu is like, I'm still in love with you. I loved you from the first moment I saw you. I was captivated by you. And she's like, you were my savior and I want to make a deal with you. And what we're going to do is I'm, uh, I'm going to give you Radu is going to give her ash and Ariel, And she's going to basically, you know, kind of be a consort to him. And, um, but when she tells, you know, Ash and Ariel the deal, uh, they're like, fuck that. Well, Ash is kind of into it. Ariel, not so much. And Ariel says, I want to go with you to Radu. And Radu's like, look, um, the, I, I've cursed you with vampirism. The one thing I can give you is your freedom. And Ariel says, well, if I have my freedom, then I want to be your consort and not your fledgling. And he's like, are you sure you want to, you want to come with me? Have you seen the drool? It's starting already. And she's like, yeah, I want to be with you. And as soon as she says this, no sooner are the words, I would like to stay with you, Redu, out of her mouth. than Diana, the vampire killing vampire shows up 
and is like, I want to torture you, Radu, but I'm not going to kill you. And uh, Ariel goes after her to destroy her, and instead uh, she is destroyed by Diana. Like, she, she ends up dying. And it's a real bummer, right? Um, but, uh, yeah, uh, kills Ariel, and then uh, I think Diana is killed in the same moment. Like, they, they sort of kill each other. Ash um, ha, uh, is going to stay with Helena. Um, and then Radu ends up destroying Helena by literally twisting her head off and throwing it in a fire. And so we leave uh, Ash in Bucharest. And then Radu is off to kind of wander the world. And uh, Helena, you know, makes this curse about uh, how he'll eventually be driven to madness and so forth. And he basically says, like, she she won. Helena ultimately won because down through the years, I met this woman named Michelle, and she drove me to madness. She made me to make a made me make a lot of bad decisions. And in the process of making those bad decisions, I was destroyed. And I destroyed my father, my brother, my mother, and and then myself, all because of Michelle, who looks like Helena. And that is this weird retconning of the series in a lot of ways, because it sort of fills in the gaps. Like, I don't know if Ted Nicolau had this idea all along, but it's kind of interesting to me that suddenly we have an emotional reason for Radu to do what he does. It explains why he has this fixation with Michelle over just like my early speculation was, I think it's just because his brother and Michelle get along. And so he wants to, this is another thing that he can take from his brother in this movie's kind of posits. No, no, no. Like Radu is secretly a bit of a romantic. He's always been this lonely figure and has never had anybody that stayed with him. Like Ariel was going to stay with him and was sort of of a mind. She was equally monstrous in some ways, but gets murdered. And so that leaves him alone. Ash wanted to leave him for Helena. Helena didn't really want him. She wanted Ash because he was young and pretty and Radu is, you know, a gross drooling shit vampire. And so that's why Michelle was the, the pretty, pretty thing that Radu wanted. And I'll be damned if I did not find myself feeling kind of bad. Like there's a poignancy to that last moment where Radu is reflecting on, Hey, you know, all this time, ever since I was created, I've really just been looking for somewhere to belong and somewhere and someone to love. And the pursuit of that destroyed me and everything I knew. And it's crazy that that's where we end up. Like blood rise is the, you know, the, uh, I've said this about all these movies, blood rise in and of itself is not a terrific movie. You know, it's still Ted Nicolau is many things. He, he is not great at pacing. Um, it, like he gets kind of up his own ass with the lore and that's kind of fine because where this movie starts and where it ends up is kind of nice. I, there are things I really like about it. I think that if I'm going to rank the movies, which I, I probably ought to do, it, it's probably Subspecies, Subspecies 2, then this one, then probably Bloodstorm, just for the silliness of it, then Vampire Journals and Subspecies 3 is how I would rank it. But this one kind of ranks pretty high for me because it does give Hove uh, some opportunity to really show that he's a pretty good actor. It, it Although when you put him in the makeup and he's doing the voice and everything, it, he's older. You know, there's no way to get around it. He doesn't sound the same. He doesn't look the same. He doesn't really move the same way. Uh, but that's okay. That's fine. And uh, you get him his performance you get Denise Duff getting to be kind of the bitchy vampire queen and, you know, arrogant and confident and self-assured. And it's fun to see Denise D Duff shift gears and do that in this movie as well. Uh, basically, you're given this stable of actors that 
are 25 years away from doing these movies, a chance to go back and revisit the roles in a different way, to do something different with them. And I really like that about it. And I like the emotional hooks of it. I just don't think the vampire stuff is very good. Uh, I do like the, the Ariel character, although she seems to really vacillate quickly between I hate being a vampire, I hate what you've done to me, oh, can I be your vampire bride? All of that seems to turn pretty quickly, but that's okay. Uh, at the end of the day, Subspecies 5 Blood Rise, one of the better entries and uh, one of the more interesting character studies uh, as far as these movies go, which I, you know, one of the complaints I made is that you're, you've got all these characters and you're not really doing anything with them. And it's as if Ted Nicolau heard me somehow and decided like, oh, I'm going to actually make a movie where we're exploring the internal geography of Radu and giving him a reason for his behavior in those first movies. And it's, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. If you like the subspecies movies, this is a really nice coda. I don't know that you need to make any more, but it's kind of a nice way to provide a weird retconning emotional backstory to the movies. And I'm kind of interested the next time I watch, you know, subspecies and subspecies too, which at some point I probably will because I'm, I'm kind of a nerd for it, especially those first two movies. Um, looking at those films as a way, uh, like a, a, a continuation of the story that really begins in subspecies five and, and seeing Radu as a very different kind of character of not just a monster. Um, so, you know, <laughs> subspecies five, you taught us to love again. Thank you. Uh, so that's it. That's it for the subspecies series kind of ending on a pretty good note. I was really worried after subspecies four being really, you know, schlocky and silly that I was in for more of that with subspecies five, but there's a, a weird sort of elegance and, and dignity to subspecies five that doesn't exist in a lot of the other movies. So I really, uh, I really enjoyed it as a, 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 a nice little, you know, cherry on top for this series. Uh, but tomorrow we are not doing a series. We're going to do a couple of movies that uh, are not just sequel after sequel, although we'll get back to doing some movies and their sequels as well. Cause I kind of like doing that. I like following it, following a series all the way through to its uh, logical or illogical end. Uh, so we'll be back to that kind of business later in the week. But for now, a couple of one-offs, some movies that I've heard are good and I've been wanting to see. So uh, let's see if people were lying to me. All right. Well, that is it, everybody. I hope you have an incredible October 6th. Uh, we are almost uh, a full week into the Halloween season. Hope you're enjoying these. I hope you come back tomorrow for even more of the 31 Days of Halloween. See you then. Oh.